In that book, you suggested that cremation is better than burial for both the being and the family. Could anything be done for the folks who are already buried? Oh. <laughs> so let's understand this. Well, for the relatives, for friends and those who are close to that person, the body means a lot. Though, at least in their experience, that person is not there anymore, he does not inhibit, inhabit, I'm sorry, does not inhabit that body still, because this is how they had known them, just the form. And they also know, if you hold him for a little while, he will rot. In spite of that, there is attachment, there is emotion. So this is a sensitive matter, different people have come to different things. Well, and it's also a religious matter, because some people believe you have to bury them, but you need to understand, Wherever burials happened in places where... I'm talking about ancient times. In ancient times, if you observe which are the regions where there is burial, which are the regions where there is cremation, you will see wherever there were deserts, wherever there were extremely cold places, wherever there was no trees and firewood, there the tradition became of burial. Wherever there were forests, wherever there was wood to burn, there they took to cremation. Well, in some societies, we took to a certain mode because of a certain awareness of what happens post-declaration of death. I'm particular about this. I'm not saying post-death, post-declaration of death. Somebody has been declared dead by whatever kind of doctors or wise people who were around, they observed certain parameters, no breath, no temperature, certain things are gone, vital signs are gone, so they declared that person dead. But the nature of how... how invested we are in this body, that this life energy, this karmic substance, has kind of enmeshed itself into every cell in this body. So it doesn't just go poop like that, it will take its time. Because certain types of prana don't leave, I won't go into this detail, it's an elaborate thing, you must read it in the death book, that's better. I don't know why this question is being asked because I thought it was elaborately handled in the book, anyway. So it is living in stages. Because it's living in stages, there will be certain disturbance to that life. And also the people who are dear to that person, because they will experience a certain level of turmoil which is beyond their emotional disturbance that's happened because of a loss of a dear one, not just that a certain kind of turmoil begins to happen because that life is going through that. Due to genetic relationship, there will be a certain level of turmoil. To address this, there are many aspects. Again, elaborately it's been addressed in the death book, but let me put it in a more simple way. Because life is exiting, when it exits to a certain point, that person will get declared dead medically because everything is over, it cannot be revived, it's reached that point, but still life is exiting. If you allow it to exit for a long period of time, there's an unnecessary disturbance. So, normally in this country, in this culture, we fixed one and a half hours as a time to cremate, within which you must cremate. But declaration of death sometimes was not a very qualified declaration. 
That is, there was no proper medical person to be sure that the person is actually dead. And also, even if all the parameters like breath, heartbeat, everything is gone, suppose the exit, uh, the exit of this is happening very slowly, when you set fire to this body, it tends to sit up. It is not that it is extremely rarely it's happened because of ignorance that somebody sat up and ran out of their cremation uh, situation, that's extremely rare because that's done in an ignorant way, somebody checked and no breath and they said, okay, one and a half hours, how long he's not been breathing and uh, because they rushed up or maybe it was your mother-in-law or your enemy, I don't know. <laughs> Those things could have happened very... not very often, you know, somewhere it might have happened. But it's happened many times that the dead body tends to sit up in reaction and fall back. That happens quite often. That's one reason why the dead don't run away anywhere, but you will see in southern India at least we still maintain this. When a dead body is carried, we tie it down so that he doesn't sit up. Just in reaction, it stands up. And also the loss of... Uh, what to say... The, the loss of water and moisture that is there when it begins to happen, the body has a tendency to curl up and sit not exactly sit but has a tendency to come up. But this is also due to the residual prana which is still exiting. So in that sense, if people are below eighty-four years of age and they have died, it is best to cremate. If they are over eighty-four years of age, generally the... most of the time, I would say ninety-five percent of the time or even more, the the life energies have already become feeble. When it exits, nothing much is left or almost nothing is left. So, over eighty-five or eighty-four years of age, sometimes they buried them because it didn't matter. But if they are below that, especially if they are much younger, suppose they died due to an accident or a disease or an injury or something, then always cremation is the way. Cremation is a good thing to do because it is... it settles for that person and for the emotional lot who are around. Because just the idea, somebody is very dear to you, you put him in a box and put him under this garden, you know, in this garden beneath the surface. You can't leave this place and go because you know your loved one is still there. It's very difficult to do that. It's all right, people put mud on it and went away, you put some flowers, but your struggles will not close. The struggles are not purely psychological. There is a physiological struggle also because of a certain genetic relationship which is beyond what you think and feel. So cremation settles those things. So general prescription would be Unless they're over eighty-four years of age, it's best to cremate. I don't know if this question is coming from the context of the virus-related deaths. If it's a virus-related death, it is best to cremate. This has always been the practice across the world. Whenever there are contagions, whether it's plague or this virus or that virus, Everybody understood in their wisdom, the best thing is to cremate. But now situations have become vitiated, my religion versus your religion business. For the dead, there is no religion, at least that much you must understand. The dead person is not making any choices. It is for the living you're making these choices in many ways. And if they have died of a, a, a contagious disease, it is definitely best to cremate, there is simply no question about it. But I know this is a... they're making it religiously, politically a sensitive issue because they want to make an issue out of everything. This is not to go against anybody's wishes or sensitivities, but this is the safest thing to do at times like this. Having said that, a certain amount of education should happen in the society that when there is a contagion, 
you keep your sensibilities, your traditions aside and simply do what is needed. Right now, our work is important, I want to go out, so many people want to go out. We keep it aside and stay here because it's not safe for us. Above all, it's not safe for everybody else, that's very important. If it was not just safe for me, I can go and do it, it's my choice. But when what I do is not safe for anybody else, when what I do is not safe for the society, for the nation and for the world, then I have no business to do it, I have no right to do it, it doesn't matter what I think or what I feel about it. It's not just about cremation, about everything that we do, this is a fact. This is a basic human sensitivity that all of us should have. No matter what we believe, what we adhere to, how important we think what we believe is, when it comes to causing damage to other lives, we have no business, it doesn't matter what kind of sensitivities we have about it. So, one who is already buried, should I exhume and cremate? Well, <laughs> if I say this trouble, but uh, if they died suddenly and it's within forty days, it'll be a damn good thing to do, to take it out and burn. But if it's a long time ago, there is no point, it's become part of the earth, there is no need to do that. But you need to understand this, today modern science is telling you this, a dinosaur that died a million years ago or more, if you find a little bit of something from that, not even a bone, a fossil, from that they're taking out a cell and talking about recreating that dinosaur. In, in theory, possible. Well, nobody has brought back a dinosaur, thanks to them <laughs> We have enough trouble <laughs> We're not able to handle a microorganism. How to handle a dinosaur now? No, no, we don't want a dinosaur. We see them in the museums, we see their bones or plastic structures which are there, we appreciate that, that's good. We don't want a dinosaur walking around here anymore. But I'm saying in theory it's possible, that means even a little bit of genetic content if you get, you can recreate that. So there is something to that aspect. It is... it is like this that today there are certain thermal imaging technologies, forensic scientists are using this. Uh, now I sit here for one hour and then go away. After seven days, if they come, well, a dog can always do it. A dog will come and smell and knows that I was sitting here. But with scientific instruments, they're able to take the thermal imaging and say it was this person who was sitting here. After seven days, we have not left anything here, all right? We are not sweating, we are not doing something else, nothing. Just with thermal imaging, up to seven days they are saying instruments can do it. But dogs can definitely do it, many of the carnivorous animals can do it. Just that uh, they don't follow your instructions, they do it for their own reasons. So, it is important when somebody dies, we must understand it's the end of the game. And we must treat it that way. We want to continue that process, that is not good. So planting it in the earth, however dear they are to you, planting it in the earth, they are not going to raise like another seed or a tree, it's not going to work. So if you must bury, at least plant a tree on it, because you can go and enjoy the tree and say, this is my grandfather's tree, it'll be wonderful. We can make use of it, the tree will absorb the person as quickly as possible. But, as I said, for that life it is best cremation, unless they're over... they're over eighty-four years of age, or if they've completed those one thousand and twelve moons are over. Hmm. Death is something that happens only once in our lives, it's important. 
that we conduct it well and everybody around us are sensitized so that they also conduct it well for us because as you become helpless, there will be idiots around you who will do all kinds of things out of their emotions or their belief systems or whatever. It's very important because a dying person has no religion or a dead person definitely has no religion, no caste, no creed, no nothing. It's human prejudice which carries on with this. At a time like this, when people are dying in thousands every day just because of one cause, natural deaths are anyway happening, nobody is reporting them anymore. But just the virus deaths are happening and there is a fear that it could multiply into millions, we don't know whether we will be able to contain it or not. Nobody is sure about it. Everybody is talking many things, but nobody is sure. This is not to spread fear, panic, but if we do not look at a situation square the way it is, we won't be able to handle it either. Very important to see what it is. What it is right now is one big unknown. As I said yesterday, it is not just anymore uh, a respiratory issue, it's getting into your liver, kidney. Above all, it is destroying your uh, lymphocytes or T-cells, that means your immune system is bringing it down and making the situation very conducive for itself. So, you are encountering a very smart virus and we still don't have any handle on them. We don't have any handle on them at all, absolutely. Only thing is, we are controlling it by controlling human behavior. Please, all of you behave. Yeah.